how to have a classy and well put together social media profile. I'm gonna share with you those 10 crucial things that you really need to be cautious of, whether to post or not post on social media. My dear elegant ladies, welcome back to a new video. Let's dive straight into point number one. Provocative or sexy pictures or videos. You know what? All of the stuff with your body is out there where it's too intimate. We have two types of provocative pictures online. We have the obvious sexy pictures and then we have the kind of silent, non-obvious sexy pictures. So a typical not obvious but sexy picture would be something like this. You know, very much, oh, we're just, you know, playing ball here, but we all know kind of what we're looking at, right? Still very sexy and provocative. This would be a typical, obvious, sexy and provocative picture. And ladies, I don't want you to go in this direction because this is forever going to stay on the internet and you just really don't want to position yourself like this. But you might be wondering, Anna, does it mean that I can never take a picture in a bikini and post online? Well, this is how I see it. There is a difference between taking a casual, cute vacation picture like here. I think this is fine. But then when you do something like this, this becomes different. It becomes too posy, a bit too provocative and not so casual and kind of innocent in a way. Of course, this would be also quite unattractive if a man was doing the same thing. I would not want my future husband to be posing, you know, on the bed with his body parts out. I just would not take him seriously. I really don't understand what it is about those couples or no usually it's one person in the couple who is very active on social media all the time posting intimate pictures or videos or stories from the relationship they're kissing there they're making out there they're hugging there they're touching intimate body parts there here they're half naked in bed here they just woke up and who knows what they just did you know there is such a thing as too much information about a couple online and i think you should not be oversharing about your personal relationship online Having, let's say, like a husband appreciation post once in a while or, you know, if it's Valentine's and you want to post about how, uh, how much you love your partner, I don't know, it's fine, but do it in a balanced way. Don't be every other day or every week bragging about your relationship. I think we all know how nauseating that can be. Getting all this in your feet and you're like, I don't want to see them making out. The next one is such a big pet peeve of mine. I find this to be so ridiculous. I'm sure you have seen many people, especially on like maybe Twitter or Instagram stories, post like random passive aggressive quotes. But deep down, you know that that quote is directed towards someone. There is always a deeper message behind whatever is said in the quote. It's not posted there just for no reason. And whenever I see these type of posts, I find them to be so incredibly ridiculous because I find it to be so immature. I mean, we're all adults here. If there is a problem, why not just talk about it between closed doors? Why do we need to be cryptic and send out these, you know, hidden messages, hoping that, oh, that person is gonna read that and understand and then go and change? Come on. First of all, nobody's gonna be like, that was for me. She's right. I should change. You know what? Let me go and change right now. Here I have a few examples. Don't let him have the satisfaction of knowing you'll always be there waiting. I think it's such a cliche thing that women, especially women, have the tendency of doing this. Posting something to poke the attention of some guy that it didn't work out with and, and really think that he actually is going to care. He's not going to care. It's not a good look. If you want to be classy, if you want to look put together, then this kindergarten behavior is not, you know, the things that you should be doing. Next in line, I'm sure some of you have heard this because this is actually a pretty old school tip if you want to be more elegant. I'm talking about never be photographed with cigarettes or alcohol in the picture. So you don't want to be seen grabbing bottles. You don't want to be seen, you know, holding cigarettes. 
You don't want to be seen, generally speaking, out there with your drinks when you are partying. Because the truth is, you don't really want to be photographed a lot when you're out partying. That is kind of the time where you want to be a little bit more discreet. Okay, I know that as an example, there are sometimes photographers, if you're, let's say, at an event or at some form of party where you have like an official photographer, they're taking pictures. I would really recommend that you try to, you know, put away your drink when you're taking that picture because that picture is most likely going to be online forever. You don't want to be there grabbing your drink hopefully you're not holding any cigarettes because you know if you are a smoker always always do that in private you don't really want to be advertising your bad habits of course there are situations where there is an exception let's say you're doing an instagram story that you're doing a cheers you know with a champagne glass with your girlfriends i think that's different right but when you are seen at parties and you're there with alcohol maybe your glass is even dirty i don't know it just doesn't give a good look so have a general rule that you are not photographed with cigarettes, with alcohol, and of course, limit the pictures that are taken of you at night because you might wake up the next day full of regrets. And what happens on the internet stays on the internet. Never ever go online when you have had too many drinks, when you are drunk, even when you're tipsy, because you know what happens. First of all, many of us get a drunken voice. So even if you had only, let's say, two glasses of wine, we can hear it because the voice has changed. Same goes for your speech. Your speech becomes slower when you are a little bit intoxicated. You might start slurring and recording yourself on stories, you know, saying things that you think are funny, but they're not really that funny. And then you're there slurring. Now that definitely cheapens a social media presence. <laughs> Seriously though, they're the best. Like I have the best fans. Oops. <laughs> so we definitely have to address the next point. Hashtag blast. What is it with people that want to brag online? Well, no, I think we all know what it boils down to. Pure insecurity. But the sad thing is that it's so common now on social media because it's almost like a battle of who has the most of this, who has the most of that, who does the coolest thing. They are really trying hard to make the viewer understand that they have a lot. But why? Can it be because maybe they don't have so much? Because from my experience, I really do find that most people who have a lot, they're not out there promoting what they've got. They're more discreet. Oh no. <laughs> oh, my. this is bad. <laughs> what is up with that pose? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, sitting on the ground or somehow, you know, from the ground, leaning a little bit towards your car, even though that looks kind of ridiculous, but he actually climbed up on the roof. <laughs> oh, that's creative. I give him a point for that. <laughs> no, you know, the best is that he has taken like so many different pictures from so many different angles of how he's sitting on his car. Like, look at my car. Make sure you get all the angles. People really have to see my car, what brand it is. Now, let me know in the comments below what you think about this type of person online, because the next point is about the attention-seeking drama queen. That, unfortunately, does exist in quite high quantities on social media. It's like that is their secret little hub, because that's where they get all the attention. And what I don't like so much about this type of person is that they always leave these like attention-seeking cryptic posts. Okay, as an example, you know, a person takes a picture. They're somewhere, looks like a maybe medical center or hospital. They're taking blood. They have a needle up their vein and that's it. They just take a picture of that and then they disappear from social media. <laughs> and everybody's wondering now what's going on? What happened? Has something happened? But in reality, that person maybe were just, you know, did a regular blood checkup. But this is the thing that the drama queen would post something like that just to make people wonder and then disappear and be cryptic for the next few days. Of course, we all have drama moments in our life and it's normal that life is not picture perfect. But choose your battles wisely, ladies. Don't be out there every other day having some form of drama that you air online. An occasional drama, that's fine. That's part of life but don't make this a habit.
And this actually leads me to the next point, because I have a strict rule for myself. I don't mind being vulnerable online, I don't mind being personal, and of course, show some parts of my intimate life. However, I have a rule that if I'm overly negative, or if I have a really bad day, I don't go out online. I keep it for myself. Because why would I share all this negativity with other people and ruin their day? I understand life happens and there are bad moments and sometimes you have to share negative news or maybe you want to share some inner negative thoughts of yours, but it's about how much of that you do. Of course, we as humans, we have those days, but it's about understanding what you should keep in private and what's appropriate to share to the public. Not everything is. So one thing that I'm very careful with on social media because of the aesthetic, that is light. I rarely take pictures at night that I post on my Instagram profile, let's say, because unfortunately at night, it's really hard to get nice pictures. You often get pixelated pictures, blurry pictures, weird colors, and actually quite unflattering colors in general. If I was you, I would avoid taking pictures at night. No low light photos on your social media profiles. Take all your pictures during daytime. When you have real colors coming out, you're gonna have a much flattering social media feed. And ladies, that is actually my personal strategy that I've used for years and years, and it has worked so far. And to those ladies who actually are trying to become an influencer, I need to give you a little bit of advice because there are a lot of kind of cheap influencer tactics that some people do and it definitely does cheapen their social media presence. As an example, participating in these strange, obscure giveaways or kind of like a little bit low level giveaways, that definitely does cheapen a person or their brand so much. Or as an example, working with the wrong brands, brands that have a cheap branding to them. I remember several years ago, there was this trend that every influencer were working with this Fit Tea company, and it just wasn't elevating for the influencer to be associated with a brand like that. You know, ladies, we live and learn. And I have certainly lived and learned in my life. And that's the reason to why I created this private video. Yes, I want to keep it private. Where I share my most horrifying mistakes that I've made in my life. Oops. I have learned from them. And I'm sharing in this exclusive video with you so that you can learn from my mistakes and improve your life. Simply go to levelupsecret.com and register for this free video that is soon about to disappear. So make sure you get your hands on it today before it's too late. The next video that you should be watching right now, actually, YouTube has selected it for you already. So hop on over to that video because YouTube thinks that they know you really well. So they know exactly what you should be watching right now. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to subscribe too.